Hey, um, Coach Norvell and Coach Fuller also mentioned that the uh, defense forced a few turnovers today or got a few takeaways. Um, was the offense trying to do too much or, or were those just really good plays by the defense in your impression? No, I think it's, you know, I think they just made good plays. You know, uh, until you throw two picks, that's the middle field safety with Ben and, um, you know, forced turnover. Those are forced, you know, turnovers. So they did a good job of, of you know, taking them all away. Next will be Ben Myerson from Tomahawk Nation. Hey, Coach. Um, just what's your what's your impression been of Bless Harris and Caden Lyles, and where have they uh, been coming through in their development? How have they been fitting into what you guys have been doing? Well, yeah, well um, first I'll speak on Bless. You know, Bless got thrown into the fire. You know, he taking reps, ones, twos, and threes. I've been putting him against different matchups, different situations, really depending on the situation that's called for in practice. You know, if I see him a little fatigued and we got two-minute drills, it's the threes, I'm throwing him in there. You know, if we're on the goal line, it's the ones. I want to see him straight in, you know, just throwing him in some compromising uh, situations just to see how he responds mentally to, you know, more reps, situational functioning, fatigue, all that, you know, because technically, you know, this is only my 10th practice with him. So I got to see him uncomfortable and force him into some situations, see how he can respond. And that's how we get to learn each other and keep growing a relationship. With Caden Lowes, you know, same thing. You know, I put him in some – rough situations where he got to be a leader and, and sometimes guide and tell guys what to do and also stress to him that he has to know it playing in the middle of the offense. So, you know, really just challenging them each day to see what kind of response I get and then growing a relationship from there. But I've been pleased with both of their progression. Thanks for being Brennan Sano from Mills 247. Hey, Alex, it, it sounds like both Micah Pittman and Johnny Wilson had solid days uh, when we spoke to Coach Norvell earlier. I, I guess what have those two done well throughout camp to kind of acclimate themselves to this offense? And what do they do particularly well today? It's the same thing. It's, you know, a lot of it is just learning how we do things and what the standard of how we operate and, um, and, and making sure they're consistently hitting it. Now, of course, the easiest thing to do is watch them make plays, you know, catch the ball and, and, and move. But it's so much more that coach is pleased with. It's just good to see the result of it because that gives you a chance to talk about it. But those guys are fit into those rooms. It's like they've been in for a long time because, you know, they're in there, you know, they're in that situation. You don't see them going the wrong way a bunch with these huge missed assignments. They're out of mistakes. They're, they're going to they're gonna be mistakes. But what's good is that they, they fit in, they're making plays, you know, they're learning it. And then after the mistakes, you see a lot of guys still encouraging them and, and pushing them forward. So it's good to see their progression. It's going to be as long as you may be for more, Hey, Coach, uh, you know, Coach Norvell was talking about the fact that this has always been a very inclusive coaching staff. You've always been heavily involved in game planning. Have you seen any benefit, though, to the offense with you now having the added responsibility of being the offensive coordinator? Well, we made a few changes to the offense, but it's really more just pushing our guys forward with mentality and everything else. Of course, I've always sat in the game plan rooms. I've always sat and been a part of, you know, we talk constantly during series, between series. You know, it's always been constant. It's just more of finding what our guys do best and accenting that. We're just finding it like a lot of this is not only evaluation of us, it's evaluation of the offense. And just trying to see what we do best and make sure we're putting them in the best situations and and and, and best ways to make plays. So it's not just really plays. It's just, hey, what are we doing? What are these guys doing well at? Let's formulate it around the players that we have and the ones that's making plays. All right, we'll go back to Ira. How much have you enjoyed? I know you've talked before about when Jordan goes in the huddle, you know, the guys know, you know, guys want to play for Jordan because of what he brings as a competitor. Have you seen some signs of that with the younger quarterbacks in terms of commanding the huddle and that type of thing? Yeah, of, of course, you know, like Jordan, of course, is a little bit different because, you know, he's, he's the guy. So, but the other guys, as they make plays and guys see them lightening up and then they build more confidence, like, you know, Tate's giving them receiving some chances, you know, guys are, you know, old line, we got to be at, okay, now we got that in, so we got to block more. Like, like you got to, like, when we talk about that, we talk about guys who make other guys overachieve. And that's a trait that's built, you know, and, and, and it's building, like, just like the young guys, like it, it was built with Jordan. You know, it didn't walk in like that way. It comes from relationship on and off the field. So those, those guys continue to progress and guys see that, yeah, of course, that's going to happen for them. And, and you know, I'm looking forward for them to go through that journey to be able to get those guys to look at them like that. All right, we'll go back to Ben Byerson. Hey, Coach. Um, this is kind of a big picture question, but from an offensive philosophy standpoint, how important is motion in what you guys are doing? 
Um, and what's the use for it? And what are you trying to accomplish? When you're talking about motion, you're talking about multiple things, you know, it's more of a broad term. Like when you motion, you're trying to create leverage sometimes. Sometimes you're trying to make a change of strength motion. Sometimes you're trying to make movement motion, whether it be speed or, you know, run across the field. Or sometimes you're trying to dictate coverage or dictate defensive calls based off motion. So, you know, it's an offensive weapon that all, most off, all offensive use, depending on how the defense adjusts or what advantage we create by moving and not just staying stagnant at the same time or just getting them on the move to create speed pre-snap. So there's abundance of things. How we like to look at it is it, it, what advantage it gives us. We don't want to be a team that just motion, just the motion. We're going to create a, an advantage point and see why we want to do this to create an advantage for our offense or to get a guy free or, or defensive communication. So it's, it's multiple things that we use motions for. Alex, Mike talked a little bit earlier about, you know, Tate's development, you know, uh, trying to push Jordan a little bit. What have you seen from him and how important is it for Tate to kind of keep striving, even though he may not be the starter this year, how important is it for him to keep striving to try to get that job maybe to push Jordan a little bit more? Yeah, I don't, I don't think it's more about pushing Jordan. It's just more of becoming the best quarterback he can become. It's just more improvement. You know, of course, in football, we look at everything as competition. This is more of Tate becoming the best player he can become and get better each day. And Jordan is the QB, but I like to see Tate progress, just like Jordan had to progress before he was the guy. You know, it's just more of are they taking the steps to become it's the best player they can become? Now, you know, competition comes with, 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 with the job we have. But at the end of the day, everyone's job is to become better each day. And what we like when we talk about Tate is we like that he's getting better each day. But also Jordan is getting better. He's like, so it's, it's a full progression of deal. We just like it because, you know, Tate's a little bit different because you know, he's, he's making some big strides. Uh, Schrader, Thomas Schrader getting to play some of the scrimmage today. Coach Norvell was happy about that. Mm -hmm. uh, I know. Going back to when he first got here, Thomas was a guy you, you guys had high hopes for, but he's had so many setbacks. Uh, he's had a couple of setbacks. You know, how close, you know, do you think he'll be in a position where he might be able to help out by this fall? Uh, kind of where is he in his development? Because that's obviously had to put him back some. Yeah, he'll help us. You know, he'll, he'll be fine. He's just going through his process of returning to play, but he got out there and mixed it up in live situations. I think that's the best telltale sign that he's going to be ready to go. So I'm pleased with his progression. You know, the, Josh and those guys down there in the athletic training has done a phenomenal job with him. You know, he's confident. So we're going to keep um, pushing him to the limit of what they allow us to, but he's doing a really good job. He will help us in the fall. This will be Carter Carlos from Tallahassee Democrat. Alex, I want to ask you about Tony Tokars. Um, just how would you describe how he kind of coaches his quarterbacks and what does he give to that room? And then uh, secondly, what's your favorite season of the wire? All right, here we go. So first with Tony, I know it's going to sound, okay, he, he coaches for understanding. There's a difference between coach and the coach, just so, you know, you're saying the right things. But when I watch Tony, he's coaches for understanding. So when he looks at, when I look at him, look at the quarterback in the eyes and look back, he's making sure they understand not only what he's saying, but the context and the content of what he's saying. And I think that's a difference because I can go out there and I can just yell the right answers and they can spit them back because sometimes it's memory. Sometimes you, you go in a position meeting and they memorize what you say, but they don't have an understanding. The biggest compliment I see from him is, is his, his players and how he coaches is they understand what's going on and the why we're doing the things we're doing. And um, if I had to go my favorite season of the wire, I would believe it will most likely be the last two seasons because it brings it all to a close in totality when it deals with the media. You know, kind of how they tie running and their kind of connections to Baltimore. And also you see the rise in power of, of another another, you know, in the streets, you know, with Marlowe. And you got to get to see the the power structures of how things are operated and disciplined and you know, kind of life goes on. You know, as important as you are, you know, our time will pass. So no matter what you're doing, make sure you're humble and grateful and enjoy your time, but always know that you know our existence is insignificant when it comes to the big picture. I'm not sure how to follow up a question on, on favorite seasons of the wire. It's a <laughs> uh, I, I guess I'll stick with offensive line though. I want to get your thoughts, Alex, on uh, the development of Darius Washington. I know you guys talked about moving him at different spots this spring, I guess how he's doing with, with the process of playing different spots. And then also just Marie Smith and how he's, he's developing physically. Uh, now that he seems pretty healthy and consistently playing. Darius is, um, you know, very similar to a player I had John LeBlue, who you know, was with the Steelers, but he, he's one of the few players I've had that play all five positions. He snapped the football, 
He's playing, you know, guard, tackle. He, I can swing him out there anytime he can perform. So he's a guy that, you know, he, he, he comes to work every day. His, his, we do the GPS and, the, and the, the functions through, like, the workloads and things like that. He is always really good. He's a work-hard guy. So I can't say enough good things about Darius. Now, I got to challenge Darius in other areas, but I also got to say thank you for Darius for, because, you know, in this day and age, you know, nobody wants to play all five positions, and he's able to do that for us. And what was the second part of your question? I didn't hear the second part. I heard about Darius. The, the, the second part was about Maurice Smith and now that he's been healthy and consistently uh, practicing, I guess, what kind of development he's had. Yeah. Mo, you know, Mo is, is, is sometimes I take Mo for granted, man. He's steady Eddie. You know, he's been a, a good force for us. Of course, the generality, you know, he has to get better because people forget about Maurice. You know, he was a young guy. He's still a young guy. You know, he's played a bunch of football just because of, of the circumstance. But, you know, he's still fully developing his body. Understanding what I've been pleased with is his understanding of the offense, the calls, and him starting to challenge those guys to do more. You know, and, and you know, he he's has his own offseason challenges that he has to go through to get bigger, stronger, faster, and all that kind of good stuff. But I've been pleased with his mental process. Back to Aslan. You know, kind of following up on Maurice, just I, I know guys aren't allowed to feel sorry for themselves, but like in this day and age when, with the transfer market and everything and, and a guy coming in, just, you know, how impressed kind of have you been with Maurice's mental application, I guess, as you said, to, to kind of keep focusing despite being pushed. And then also some young guys in terms of uh, what you're getting in the interior, SDs and Herring, how would you kind of maybe assess their growth so far? All right, most of the better. You know, you don't, you don't care who I bring in there. You're going to compete as high as the mentality is. You know, even when I had a discussion, because I have discussion with my guys when we do make decisions like that, he told me, come on. So Moses is better. I don't have to worry about that. Estes, Zane, those guys have been getting a ton of reps. And like when I talked about for coaching, for understanding, I'm starting to see them do a better job of understanding the why. Because Zane is very similar to Shredder. He has some cut setbacks where he had to kind of, you know, bounce back for some things that got kept him off the field. So seeing those guys both out there taking a maximum load of reps, it's, it's going to be big time and pay off for us. And I do expect both of those guys to help us this fall also. So, you know, we're getting deeper. I know Coach talks about getting deeper in competition. And, and not only competition, just having more guys that are able to go compete at a high level. And I've been pleased with that progression. All right, we're going to go two more. We'll go back to Ben. Hey, Coach. Um, with all the new players you guys have brought in this offseason and all the returning players, um, who, who stood out to you in terms of leadership? Obviously, Jordan, you know, he, he's the natural leader of the team, but who have been some of those guys that you've seen in spring so far? On offense, man, a guy like, you know, Treshawn Ward, you know, he's done a good job. He's, 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 I see his, his passion and his energy, and he's learning how to channel that to kind of connect with all the whole offense, but his energy, his passion, he brings in. And, and you know, I, I've, I've been pleased to watch him, how he's kind of more taken on that leadership role and taking charge, Dylan Givens. He's doing another good job. You know, every time I walk in the meeting room, I see, you know, the whole group in there and he's running the remote, teaching guys and going through things. So I've been pleased with him also. You know, that's a, that's a couple of guys there that, you know, but it's been, it's, it's actually more guys, but I've been pleased that those guys stand out, man. Even Keyshawn Held, I was hearing him today. You know, those guys that's taking lead and, and doing a good job of keeping guys focused. So, you know, I've enjoyed that. And there's some more guys that's coming up, up and coming. The next time I get in front of this mic, I'm going to give them shout outs, but I, I, I like what I'm seeing. Last one will be Ira. Defensive guys like to talk. Uh, Jared Verse is certainly one of those kinds of guys. Does that do anything? Does it bring any juice to an offensive line when when defensive linemen kind of bring that kind of get a little chirpy? Uh, I mean, it's competition. You know, we don't we play a sport and we play a position where we get hands on every day, every time, every drill, everything we do, you're putting your hands on somebody else and you're trying to make them do something they don't want to do. So there's got to be a little edge and aggression to it. You know, my, my favorite thing about it is afterward, you know, they all walking together, you know, pushing each other. So that breeds competition. So, you know, talking is a part of football. You know, you look at it from a high level. Most of the time when a guy's talking, he's talking to himself to keep him motivated. You just get to hear the words he's saying because he's directing them to you. But they're talking to themselves to get them in their zone. And sometimes it could be a deterrent when they get out the game. You know, so what I like about Versus is, you know, he brings his effort. All of that speaks volumes. You know, I see him chasing down backside runs. I see him getting high effort in obvious situation, obvious pass, obvious run. So, you know, I, I like his mentality, you know, and I like how he brings it because that's who he is. You know, I always say football is, is what you do, not who you are, but who you are shows to how you play. So, you know, he, we get to see what kind of person, what kind of young man he is. All right. Thank you, Coach. No